welcome to this lecture and uh, workshop specifically for these two items uh, calculation of wind pressure as to method 2 of the NSCP which is the analytical procedure and uh, a simple workshop of how to design a steel truss basically there are a lot of types of loading no? uh, we have the gravity loads and then we have the lateral loads gravity comprises of dead load live load superimposed dead load movable partition and uh, for the lateral we only have two no? we have the wind load and then the earthquake loads uh, as to the wind load no? wind load is a force acting in the building it's building components and claddings that are exposed to the wind intensity. So either tatama lang yan sa wall mo, okay, on your components and cladding, or on your roof trusses, sa bubong. Now, this formula talks about the analytical procedure na, based on section 207.3.2. You have 0.613 kz, kzt, kd, and then the velocity raised to the power of 2 or square. No? How did they come up with this 0.613? No? So, wind, wind is assumed to be kinetic. No? So, the formula there is 1 half mass times velocity squared. No? 1 half times the mass of air. Okay? The mass of air is assumed to be 1.25 kilogram per cubic meter. No? If you try to divide it 1 by 2, you have 0 0.613. No? And then this kz, kzt, and then kd are specific values no? based on your site. Now, since 2010, our country have experienced numerous natural disasters. We have... Uh, Typhoons, we have earthquakes. No? So, from 2010, you have Mundoy, Baguio Pepeng, Juan, Pedrin, Pablo, and then Yolanda. Yolanda being the highest, no? you have 300 kilometers per hour wind velocity. And then we have an earthquake at Bohol, 7.2 magnitude. No? Now, if you take a look at the NSCP, no? there are a lot of major of changes with respect to the wind. No, not so much on the earthquake. There are three methods to calculate the equivalent design wind pressure allowed by the NSCP. Now you have the simplified procedure for regular structures and then the analytical procedure no, which is this formula that we will be implementing on our workshop. And then we have the wind tunnel procedure. Uh, this is one of the expensive no, because you need to come up with a scale model of your uh, structure say for example for a high-rise building and then subject the one to a wind tunnel procedure just like what they have done in Burj Khalifa no? and uh, here are the general general requirements no? uh, as listed by section 207A for you to calculate the wind pressure following the NSCP no? So you just go to section 207 and you have the listed procedures there. Now there are a lot of factors that affect the wind pressures. Na? You have the zoning, exposure, the building height, topography, and some other factors just like type of occupancy, whether essential, hazardous, standard occupancy, special structures, and miscellaneous structures. Directionality factor, and then type of building, and even angle of surfaces. No? So, angle of your trusses, say for example, 0 to 90 degree. The zoning accounts for the possibility of occurrence of typhoon and its expected wind velocity in a specific site. Okay, so uh, this is based on the occupancy category. No? So, occupancy category. You have a one. You have a mean recurrence interval of 1,700 years. So you refer your wind contour mapping with Figure 207A.5-1 and then C. 
na for hazardous facilities you refer to 207-1B and then for occupancy category 3, 4 and then 5 you refer to 207A.5-1 of A. Okay, so for this uh, occupancy category 3, 4, 5, no? the mean recurrence interval is 300 years. The exposure, okay, this accounts for the friction between the wind and the ground of the specific site. You have exposure A, B, C, and then D. Okay, for exposure A, dense urban environment in which 50% or more of the building are taller than 70 feet or 21 meter. No? So, this is a combination of a low-rise, medium-rise, and a high-rise building. And then for exposure B, okay, uh, dense. It's much denser, no? a combination of a low-rise to a medium-rise building. And then for exposure C, scattered. Uh, on the provinces, no? this can be uh, applicable on the provinces. And then for exposure D, your structures no? is near the shorelines. No? So the the wind pressure here is, uh, here are massive. And then the building height, no? Uh, is an important consideration in wind pressure calculation since wind pressure increases with height above the ground. Okay. There, there is a height wherein the, the structure is no longer affected by the friction no? or the exposure. And we call that one the gradient height. And uh, above that one, there is a planetary boundary okay, approximately 800 meters. No, that the wind the wind is already stable no? that's why airplanes fly at a 3600 feet no? or 1997 meters no? so these are these are the formula for you to get those uh, specific values for the KZ, KZ, if your height is less than 4.5, then you apply this formula. And then KZ for a height greater than 4.5 but less than the gradient height, you have 2.01 times Z all over ZG raised to 2 divided by alpha. So you base this one on table 207A.9.1, assuming for exposure B, no? So you have a gradient height of 365.76 and then alpha of 7.0. Okay, and uh, the topography of the site affects the wind uh, speed no? for escarpment and then two ridge and then 3D axiometrical hill. So your KZT here, the topographic factor should be greater than 1. Okay, you need to calculate for K1, K2, and then K3. Well, of course, you need the data. Okay? So, you need the contour, probably, of this escarpment. Uh, if your structure is located there or in its ridge. So, these are different types of occupancy. As I have mentioned a while ago, you have the essential facilities. Now, simply lang to, no? All government facilities should be designed as essential facilities. And they should be the last building standing. Okay, because the factor for the importance factor here it should be 1.5. Meaning to say, you're increasing 50% the base shear. Okay? You have computed. Huh? And then hazardous facilities, 1.25. And then 3, 4, 5. That would be 1. Okay? And then the directionality factor. This depends upon the structure type. Okay, if you're designing your truss as a main, main wind force resisting system, you have a KD.85 and then for components and cladding or for your walls, that would be 0.85. Okay, so again, uh, there are two major structural elements mentioned by the code, either MWFRS or the CC or components and cladding. So we have this workshop that we will be designing. You have your parameters 
and then a trial section so let's try to check if this will pass these design parameters as to specific conditions okay and uh, if we try to use the stat software with respect to the angles no? so you will be coming up with uh, this list no? with respect to angle no? so on this notation if you have seen this one in stat the first two digits should be divided by 10 to get the length okay and then uh, the, the second two digits there it's also divided by 10 to get the uh, length of the other leg no? and then the thickness okay, the last digit there should be divided by 16 okay uh, if the, our sections here is not arranged in order we need to have a beta angle okay so we have a summary of loads here based on our parameters okay I'll show you how to compute this one so top chord is 0.6 Okay, this is gravity no? going down, bottom chord going down, and then the live load, and then you have your wind load. No? Uh, it's negative, no? so this is under, sec uh, under suction. So we will be designing this truss, no? this geometric truss that we have here, a 2 meter height and then 1 meter spacing on our web members I mean the vertical web members vertical members na? okay so let's go to the calculation of our loadings na? so missing it on our param design parameters I listed it here so you have your dead loads no? uh, those are attached to your top cord to your bottom cord your live load no? I'm using the this uh, table 205-3 no? the minimum right roof live loads if by method 1 you, if you have a tributary area from 0 to 20 then you have these values no? depending on the slope of your roof ok so you have there the roof live load being 0.6 kPa no? and then occupancy category being 4 standard occupancy category and then the wind velocity to 50 kilometers per hour you try to convert that one to a meter per second exposure B and the tributary wind being 6 meter and then the roof angle being 20 and then KZ assuming a flat terrain that would be 1 and then the mean, roof, mean height okay, is equivalent to 8.5 we, we need our data na? and then applying the analytical procedure method 2 of the NSCP wind, wind calculation uh, we just need to define this KZ, KZD, KD no? these are specific again these are specific values based on our site condition you have KZ no? under exposure B that would be alpha being 7 and then 365.76 on ta table 2078.9.1 and then uh, KZ KZD is equivalent to 1 assuming a flat terrain and then KD uh, based on the type of your structure being MWFRS that would be 0.85 okay so come up with this formula you have this value 1.7241 kN per square meter or kilopascal now this pressure is assumed to be horizontal now we transmit now this pressure perpendicular to our member on this formula no? so QH here is equivalent to QZ times the sum of those external and then internal pressure coefficients no? so you have GCPI okay so assuming in close building on table 207-A.11-1 in close building you have two values no? So you try to account these two values, positive and negative, point 18. And then for the GCPF, okay, so we try to assume that our design, uh, our, our truss, okay, is located at surface 2 and then 3, no? So surface 2 and 3, based on this figure, under 20 degree angle, you have negative 0 
59.59 and then negative 0 0.48 okay so you come up with uh, uh, this formula no? so under load case 1 this one plus this one and then this value plus this value so it will come up with uh, these pressures na, in kilopascal and then coming up for the second case na, you sum up this one you sum up this portion you have negative 1.5 and then negative 1.14 okay so for the dead loads no on the top chord you have uh, the 3 beta width multiplied by this the sum of these two items no? so those who are attached at the top chord and then uh, this bottom chord would be the tributary width times those attached to the bottom chord which is this one and then for the roof live load that would just be the tributary width times the uh, roof live load no? which is 0.6 in kilo kilopascal and then uh, on our windward side, on surface 2, you have negative 9. Now, that is being 1.5 multiplied by your tributary width. Okay, so under negative, so it's suction. And then on the leeward side, this is negative 1.14, the, the maximum value here, multiplied by your tributary width. Okay, so that's uh, the process on how we're going to implement analytical procedure. Okay of the NSCP 2015.